Today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a few of those examples we looked at on the board and see how they're drafted in OptiTex. Uh, of course the principles will remain the same, but of course it's always nice to see how the actual tools in OptiTex are utilized and applied to the pattern to create the draft. Um, so let's take a look. Um, let me open up OptiTex first uh, and also let's take a look at some of the examples that we are going to go ahead and um, draft. So let's look at the first one. So we're going to do this one. Remember that these horizontal lines were just markers of bust waist hip, um, but we had a dart coming here at the neck. Um, we have this sort of middle panel here, um, and we had a pleated skirt down here. Um, so let's take a look at some of the tools we can utilize in OptiTex and how to draft that uh, using our princess seam sloper um, in OptiTex. I'm trying to remember what would... No, we use the uh, double darted. Uh, we're going to use the double dart for this one. Sorry about that. So let's get it open. And here it is. Um, now, if you remember, uh, what was going to be easiest for us was to put first these do, uh, diamond darts into one and we did go over that at the very beginning of the uh, original episode on the board so let's go ahead and do that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this guideline another guideline right at the top and bottom of where my darts are going to be so I know where they are okay we'll do the front first in fact I think I'm only gonna do the front for these um, just like I only did the front of the board um, a lot of the techniques are the same and the video would be too long if I drafted the whole thing. So let's zoom in on these darts and let's measure their widest point. Okay, half inch, half inch, which means the total distance is one inch. Okay, so what I'm going to do is remember that and I'm going to go ahead and delete these lines. out of the pattern little by little and I'll also delete these points too as I no longer need them got most of them Now what I want to do is place a point precisely where I want my new dart to be. So let's zoom out for a minute. And again, if we look at the picture, that's where this line is going to be. So I want it to be kind of in line with my apex. So this is pointing down toward the apex. Let's give ourselves a little bit of a guideline right there kind of lining it up with the other dart there we are okay now we're gonna place that point the original point right here okay and I do want that piece to be a grading point because these other two measurements I'm gonna take from that remember the total distance was one inch so I need it half inch on this side and half inch on the other side and of course that'll give us a total of a one inch width right here at the widest part which of course again will always be at the waist now I'm gonna grab my draft tool and since we have my height and de um, depth over here I can go ahead and redraft my dart as a singular entity. There we go. 
Now let's clear out those guidelines so we get a nice clean view and zoom out a bit. Okay, now let's, oh, did I close that? I didn't mean to close that. So I wanted to pop back in and out. Sorry about that. Um, remember how I said that the uh, sloper is very short? So this is gonna be a little bit longer. So um, unlike our other slopers, we're gonna have to extend this to length instead of cropping it down to length. Cause this goes to um, about the hip line down here. So let's say I want it to be about the knee. Um, and we can look back at our measurement chart to understand how long we need to um, basically extend it. Um, so if I look at my measurement chart on a size eight, the waist to knee um, is 22 and a half inches. Now we were just doing it from hip to waist. I'm sorry, from hip to knee. So from waist to hip is seven and three quarters. So I'm just gonna minus that from the total width. Um, so let's grab our calculator. 22 and a half minus seven and three quarters is 14 and three quarters. And that's how much we're going to have to extend it to get to a knee length. Okie dokie, let's leave this around just in case we need it. So what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use my extend in parallel tool. And I'm gonna come down here and in a clockwise fashion, click at the start of the line I want to extend and at the stop of the line that I want to extend. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put in the amount that I want to extend by. And there we go. Now we have it down to the knee. Okay, so now let's take another look at our pattern. And what I'm going to want to do is cut in this shape, okay? Top and bottom, and it's a style line, so I'm gonna um, draft the line in first. So if we um, just take another quick look. So what I have is um, a line here. Let's say this is the apex right here. So it's going kind of under the bust, pointing up toward the center front. And I'm probably gonna get it a little bit below this diamond dart. So let's go ahead and, and, and draft in what I want. So let's start it maybe about here sure and then I want to curve it up so I, since it's a curve I need to put a point in so I'm gonna maybe put a point right here and then curve it up to remember this point was our bust line so that might be a nice point to um, place it okay now I'm done so I can finish drafting and I can compare to the drawing okay it's coming up maybe a little bit below the bust line actually so maybe it was a little bit lower. So I can always, um, again, adjust this line if it's not what I, to my liking. So what I can do is um, I'm gonna actually use um, a different tool. I'm gonna use maybe one we haven't used. I don't think we've used it yet. We're gonna move the point along the contour, especially for here and here. So this one, it was right at the bus point. So I wanna kinda move it down a little bit. Oop. Start over here. That one I might have to move differently. Okay, so this doesn't want to, let's try just the move point. That didn't want to work the way I wanted it to. So I'm going to move it a little bit lower down here. And I'm going to grab this one and move this one a little bit lower too. And since now we're curving up, I got to move this curve point down so we get that kind of nice point. Okay, so that's going to be a little bit closer to our drawing. And um, I can go ahead and cut it now as well. And to keep to this line, I'm gonna go ahead and cut precisely as I have placed my points. I'm gonna move this out. 
And as you can see, we have a little bit different of a neckline too. So before I start to rotate my darts, I'm gonna um, change my neckline. And again, I probably wanna draft this first, but just for the sake of speed, I'm gonna go ahead and just sort of cut it in. We have this sort of strap, and then it points down, just like that, okay? Now I can adjust this too if I don't like it. So if I compare back to the drawing, you can see this is a little bit smaller over here and a little bit harder over here. So I can always cut a little bit more off. And I also can use my move point tool to adjust this point, maybe make that a little bit more like so. That's a little bit closer. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate both darts to this point right here. So uh, of course we have to cut out our darts first, so let's go ahead and do that. And this one's teeny tiny. And let's get rid of them. And now what I want to do is I want to move these points to the actual apex, okay? So how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna draw a guideline down. Remember, this point was our bus line, okay? So that is where the apex is gonna lie, and we're pretty much gonna just extend these without moving them too much right or left uh, down to the apex. zoom in and make sure that I'm doing it okay here because it looks like I moved lines but not okay no I moved the cut but not the line so I'm gonna actually get rid of this line because it's a little bit messy there we go and we can probably get rid of this guy too all right now I'm gonna go ahead and cut in where my dart should be which again is right here it's coming from that point and I'm gonna cut it to the apex now let's go ahead and join these pieces together and as it does it's going to open up that um, space right there. So let's join this guy first. And there we go. There it is. That little line's going to connect with that one. Open. And what happened to our other piece? Let's go take a look. All right, it, it completely disappeared, which is a little confusing, but I think it has to do with this dart here, so I'm just gonna delete it first. And I'm also, okay, I, what I'm gonna do is um, make sure that I actually have three separate pieces that this is cut in here, and I'm gonna do that by really zooming in really close here. I want to make sure that this is cut. See, that's not cut. So, let's cut straight along here. Are we cutting? There we are. So now it's separate, so I shouldn't have as many issues. Let's go back. And start again. So now you see I have three separate pieces. There we go. And now let's close this one as well. And there we have it. We have our dart coming in from that neckline right there, pointing toward our apex. Now for the finished version, of course, what I want to do is clean up the dart. So I'm going to zoom in, make sure it's coming to a nice point, clean up some of this extra stuff, and then use my move point tool to move it slightly away from that apex point, half an inch to an inch. There we go. Okay, so we're looking good. I have my front piece pretty much done, or my top piece pretty much done. This is all done. And um, what I want is I want my grain to be aligned with the center front. 
So let's make sure that it's doing that. It's not, so let's fix it. There we are. And of course you can always go and adjust um, like everything else, but I kind of just want to speed through the drafting today. Okay, so let's do this piece down here, this middle piece, which is actually going to be two pieces, the side and the middle with a seam. And um, so what's going to happen is let's determine, so this is about a high hip, okay? So let's say this is about high hip and it's going to come and sort of come around down in here. So I'm going to cut it right away. Again, I kind of want to do a few. Oh, look at that. Oh, well, that doesn't matter. Um, and it doesn't matter if we cut through the point or not or cut in here. We can always just make it. So um, since it's going a high hip and kind of going a little bit down, doesn't look like I'm, I'm going to pass through either the tip of the dart. There we are. Okay. So this part's really easy. All we have to do here. Come on. Can I not move you? Why can't I move you? There we are. And we're going to take a look and basically cut this guy in two. I'll start up here, going along the dart legs. Now if there is any difference between here, I don't know why that curved, didn't hit shift, anyway. It doesn't matter, it's, it's actually better if it is curved. So instead of here, it's so small, I'm just going to go all the way down to the point right there. Now let's do the other side. Is this going to curve too? Yeah, it is. Still okay, and I'm going to go down to that same point and cut. And we're going to get rid of that middle piece. Let's make sure I'm only highlighting the middle piece. Why is everything highlighted? Come on now. Okay. Uh, and that's all we really need to do. We have our front. Of course, we name this center front. Yeah, why are you giving me such a hard time moving? Okay, and this is going to be our side front. Okay, so that would be, of course, now. Uh, yeah. Get out of here. Where'd my photo go? I don't want all this nonsense. Um, but those middle panels there. Anyways, let's just remember the picture. Now what we have to do is we have to split this into our pleats, okay? So um, I'm going to show you a kind of neat tool that Optitex has. Um, but first we need to straighten this out. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that point. So we're working with a nice straight kind of rectangular um, piece and pleats like to be put into rectangular pieces. So let's go ahead and learn about a new tool called the pleat tool. And um, it is in darts and pleats, of course, here, uh, pleat, keyboard shortcut L, um, and we can also find it right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically click where I want my first pleat. So let's say I want it here. Remember we had one in the middle there. And I want two pleats, one here and one over here. So this is our pleat sort of dialogue box where we get to talk about a lot of different things. Um, and first I want two pleats, so a number of pleats here. We can also choose the type of pleats. So in the drawing they were box pleats, so we're going to go ahead and click box pleats, which is basically just two knife pleats put end to end. And we're also going to talk about the depth. Um, and box pleats, we need a little bit more depth, so I'm going to do at least one inch each. Actually, let's do it two inches. And um, there we have it. And doo -doo -doo. here I want this to be um, distributed um, counterclockwise, so because I want it to go over here. Now, if this isn't correct, sometimes I get confused myself with what direction they're going to go in. That's fine, we just reapply them with the correct. Um, information. 
um, and here's the distance between them. Um, so let's say if I wanted it about at the middle there, maybe three and a half inches. Okay, now let's see what that looks like. Okay. All right. Let's try a little bit of a less depth. Sometimes you have to um, play around a lot with this. All right, if you don't like that. Okay. Now you just won't let me do anything. So let's cancel and try again. I'm going to try it starting from the middle here. And go straight down. Again, we want a box pleat. I want two of them. Let's do clockwise this time. Um, distance between. Three and two inches. Okay. All right. Now, I wanted to show how easy these pleat tools are to use, but um, I'm failing at doing that. Um, so I'm going to just t tell you how to do it by hand. Um, if you're, the pleat tool fails you, so if you have a lot of pleats, it's worth it to kind of mess around with your pleat tool. But when you only have a couple pleats like what I'm doing, sometimes it's not worth it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut straight down where I want my pleat. And then spread it out the distance that I want my pleat depth. So again, I wanted it about two inches, so let's okay, maybe a little bit closer. Let's zoom in. Again, you can always use your guidelines. So right, if this would be exactly two inches, judging by the ruler from 80, negative 80 to 82. So I can use that to line up my spacing to get that exactly two inches and of course I want these guys to be lined up down here Boop. Boop. there's my middle pleat and then I can also just use my extend and parallel tool to create my middle pleat so I'd redraft let's redraft go straight across here. Don't continue the curve through the pleat. Won't help you make the pleats. Okay, and now while these are still here, I'm going to go ahead and draw in my pleat lines so we know where our pleat is going to be created. And Lastly, I'll take it off and extend the center front the amount that I need to create that last plea. So um, what I'm going to do, this was two inches, but this will be on fold, so I only need it to be one inch extended, because again, that's going to get doubled when we put it on fold. So I'm going to use my extend and parallel tool to extend it one inch. And of course, then draw my pleat line in one inch from that edge. And there it is. 
course, we would correct our grain line, put our pattern information, seam allowance, all that. But there we have our finished draft for that front of that dress. So let's just sort of line it up. We have the top. We have the two middle pieces for the bottom here. And we have the pleated skirt down here. Um, now, again, if you wanted another one for the side seam, I'd put another little pleat over here. That actually looked pretty cute, so you might as well do it. Um, but we're not going to do it now. Well, you would just extend the side just like I extended the front. Okay, so um, let's move on to our next example. Which is going to be this dress. And um, we created it again with the... Um, shift dress sloper um, and it's a lot of fullness a lot of little shirring um, some slash and spread down here so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at how we're going to draft it in OptiTex so let's reopen this And what I want to do is the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my neckline and then this seam right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And again, I'm going to go a little bit faster and not pre-draft these lines, although I'm not suggesting you do that. There we are, that gives us that nice deep V. And now what we want to do is cut from that point down, and let's say the apex is around right here. So again, it's going to sort of cup underneath the bust. And say this is about our apex, so let's keep that in mind. I'm going to curve that. right there okay so we have that nice sort of curve Shoop, coming down there okay so let's cut it oh I did cut it um, and I'm gonna put this guy over here to slash and spread later um, but let's go ahead and put the shirring in here um, now what's important is again to remember when we're making it bigger how much it needs to shrink down to. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look at these little guys, these little darts up here. Now they're very small, okay? So they're gonna be kind of a little bit negligible, but let's make it, okay, they're about an eighth of an inch each. So let's just remember that. That's eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch already, that is going to be negative spaces. And just to kind of clear it up, I'm going to go ahead and that quarter of an inch is already going to go into our shirring. So we already have that going into our shirring. Okay? Oops. So what I need to do here is basically first what I'm going to do is put in my notches where I want my shirring to go. And again, that's going to be wherever you kind of want it to go. It can go all the way here, it can go all the way here. Here it's kind of isolated in this little spot right here. So let's, you know, you could measure it out if you want, but I'm just going to kind of put my notches generally where I want my shirring to go, okay? So there it is. Now remember I already have that quarter inch in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure now between these two. And that is 4.67. And again, already a quarter of inch of that is going to be shirring. So I'm going to minus a quarter inch of that um, and get 4.67. Now I need to remember this number 
because that is the distance that my shirting needs to shrink down to um, when I put it with my skirt. Okay, so let's, I'm going to record that and we'll keep that in mind for later. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use dart rotation to put the fullness of the dart where we want the shirring. So we cut out the dart. Let's get rid of that dart. And let's cut up from the middle of our shirring area to that dart tip. And we're going to put all that right in our shirring area by closing our dart with our join piece tool and then there we go now that is the minimum amount of shirring needed however it's not enough to create nice shirring so what do I mean by nice shirring I mean um, like really full um, ruffled areas but that's as much as we would need to create the fit that we want um, so maybe a little couple little tucks or whatever else there if you wanted to keep it minimal but let's look at an opportunity to sort of um, really um, maximize our shirring so remember that the distance for shirring that you want is approximately double what it's going to come down to um, so if I do sort of a rough measurement here um, That'll be about two and a half plus three um, gives us five and a half. But really, I want to be looking at more like nine inches because um, remember that 4.42. I want to double that. That's what I'm really going to be looking at. So anyway, I'm going to move this because I want to cut up to the shoulder to spread this out a little bit more evenly. And then I'm going to cut again straight from this tip all the way up here. And we want to do it about in the middle, but it doesn't really matter too much where. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rotate this piece out more. Okay? And I'm going to do it. until this distance is approximately nine inches. So again, we can sort of chop it up with our ruler if you want, do it sort of segment by segment. So we got about a little over two, um, a little less than four, add that up to a little less than six. And then we'd have um, a little over eight. So now we're looking in uh, a closer area for what we want. Again, you can always do it more. You can always do it a little bit less. So now that we have the area that we want, let's go ahead and protect both these pieces and redraft. I'm gonna curve this up here slightly. course maintain this curve now actually I'm going to go back a step so um, remember when we get we want something super poofy now let's say I do want it poofy I want it to kind of poof out like this we have to extend the area that we're poofing out so instead of matching that line exactly what I'm going to do is between the area of shirring I'm going to go ahead and kind of push it out a little bit Now I might need to put another point there to kind of push it down but instead of going right along these lines I'm going to kind of go down and a little bit 
it, kind of push it out like this. And I'm going to go ahead and um, oh, it's not protected. Great. So everything I'm doing doesn't matter. Um, well, I guess it'll be a nice sort of draft preview. So now what I can do is I can fix up these lines with my move point tool. See, this is going much too sharply. We want it kind of nicely blended, the full part right in the middle here. So that's nice. That'll give us a nice. And let's check to see how deep that is. So it'll be about, about, a, about a little bit more than a half an inch. So that'll give us a really nice poofing, um, uh, kind of coming out and a nice, nice volume to our shirring around the bust there. Um, so that looks good. So instead of drafting, let's see if I can't just use the build piece tool. Let's get rid of the guideline because obviously it's messing it up. Okay, never mind. I have to draft it. And let's go ahead. So there's our top. Uh, what's very important for me to do is to uh, place the notches back into my new piece. Now I have those that's point here and here. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Boop, boop. And now we are pretty much good uh, with this um, piece. Let's correct the grain line though. Um, in this instance, so this is a very small shirred piece. Um, so what we can do, we can actually match the grain to the neckline. Um, and this is done a lot of times with these sort of little v-necks here, um, especially if there's stripes. So the stripes will match the uh, neckline um, and it looks nice. So let's do that. Okay, now let's go ahead and get rid of the pieces we don't need anymore. Oh yeah. and go ahead and um, make our slash and spread here. So what I'm going to do is, um, again, since these little pieces are so small, but it doesn't really matter, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out these dark pieces. and use them just like we use darts in a normal draft to create our pieces for slash and spread. So I'm going to go straight down to the hem here if I didn't cut anywhere else and go ahead and do this one too and I'll have to cut out some of the internal parts as well. So now we have three pieces, but let's get rid of those darts on that internal piece. Actually, you don't really need to, but it helps to line up here. So let's zoom in nicely. Looks like I might have had a misclick with one of those cuts, but it's too small. All right, let's get rid of them.
Now what we're going to do is, you guessed it, we are going to go ahead and um, slash uh, spread. So I'll keep center front as is. Now if you want more fullness in the center front, you might consider going ahead and slashing this one too. Um, let's go ahead because as you can see, this one's really small, this one's big, so our fullness is going to be a little bit uneven. So to counteract that, let's go ahead and let's split this center front panel um, a little bit as well, just so we can keep our fullness a bit more even. All right, let's move it out. Keep this one as is, and let's ro rotate them out. Oh, I don't know. Let's say 20 degrees each. Again, keeping these ones matching up at the front here. So that was negative 20, so this one has to be negative 40. And this one will be negative 60. Just keeping those distances equal. Because again, the fullness is equal. Now if we didn't want equal fullness, we would be rotating them out at different degrees. Okay, now let's protect them all and redraft the whole shape. Making sure this is a nice curve up here. And at this point, I can go straight here so it's not fitted at all in the side. So this little pinch in toward the waist is not necessary. I can go straight up to um, that last point there. In fact, it's better that I do. And there it is. So this is our dress. Um, the only difference, you might be saying, hey, Kate, you did not extend it. It only goes to the hip. That's true. Um, now we can fix this one of two ways. One, I could have extended it previously um, before I did my slash and spread. But at this point, if I go, oh no, I forgot to extend it, silly me, do I have to do this whole thing over again? Um, no, you don't. What you can do is you can again use your extend and parallel tool. So let's say I just wanted to, let's keep it short, um, so not all the way down to the knee, but maybe an extra seven inches. Boop, there we go. Uh, of course, let's align the grain. And then there we have our dress. The last thing, of course, that we have to do is to put in our notches so we know how much and where this needs to be shored down to um, and where it's going to align with the second piece. So let's zoom in on this area. And, oh, I'd only put one notch in. I thought I put both of them in. Oop, we have one here. Okay, so first what I want to do is I want to measure from here to here, because that's where my first notch is going to be, so that's 304. So what I want to do, let's make sure, okay, good, nothing is grading. Let's put a point in here that is uh, 3.04 inches from that center front. Okay, and that is where our shirring this notch is going to match up with this notch. The shoring will begin. And remember that number I said, which is what it should go down to. That, of course, is going to be the distance from that notch to our next notch. So let's put that in. And remember, that was 4.42. Let's make it grading. OK. And let's put a notch, and last but not least, to make sure um, everything is correct, I'm going to measure this 
and this. And it should be pretty close. It should match up if I have done everything correctly. Close enough. Okay. So there we are. And there is our next example. Nice little shoring piece. Okay, what's our next one? I think the next one is a go day, which should be pretty quick and easy. Yep. Yeah. So uh, we talked a little bit about go days, and again, um, they're pretty fun to put in. Um, and you go just go ahead and draft them, and this will be a pretty short example. And I'm going to use the princess seam uh, to pretty much draft that dress. Um, so let's open it up and see how we can draft our go days. So here we have this full length. Of course, in the sketch, it's not full length. Um, but just for sort of speed, I'm going to keep it full length. So just imagine this thing was full length. Um, and what I would like to do is find out where my go days are going to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down a guideline and line up all my pieces. Kind of as such. Again, making sure the hems are all even down here. And then I'm going to drop down another guideline where I want my go day to start. So it was about at the hip line. So here's about my hip line right here. Well, actually, it's up here, but uh, I'm going to drop it down a little bit longer. Let's say let's, let's put our break right here. Again, we can do it anywhere we want, so it is where it is. But what's important is I now need to put notches on all these pieces where the go days are going to go. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Let's get that out of the way while it's all nicely lined up. And if we take a look, I do have a center front seam, so nothing's going to be on fold. And I'm just going to go ahead and slap in some notches. And um, also another thing to note that I don't think I said with go days before, you do want them to be in a straight seam. You can't really put them in a curved seam or any kind of shaped seam. So see how these are all running kind of straight down to the hem? That's perfect, that's ideal. I don't want them to be kind of curving or anything else like that. That's gonna make it much more difficult um, uh, and really not want them to sit into the seams very well. So make sure that if you are gonna do go days, they're set into straight seams that go straight down to the hem. No curving, no angling, no nothing else. Okay, now all my um, lovely little notches are in there. I get to know how long my go day legs need to be. So I'm going to measure from that notch that I just put in down to the hem. Okay, 25.18 inches. That are the distance of my uh, go day legs. Okay, now I need to decide how wide I want my go days to be. Now let's say I want them to be about, oh, three inches. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is let's draft them. I'm gonna draft the whole thing. And the first thing I wanna do is put in that width. So I'm going to draft a line that is three inches wide, but I also want a point um, right in the middle that's going to help us. Actually, I don't think we need to do that. So let's just draft the whole thing. Here, it's just going to start here, and then I'm going to hold down the Alt key and I want this to be three inches all in the X direction. No change in the Y. Okay, now what I want this to do is I want this total length. This is gonna be a little tricky in your measurement box. You're gonna have to finagle it a little bit, but we're going to 
let me just click it up here, I'm going to do it generally where we want it, which is aligned with the middle here. Now I want the total distance here to be 25.18, okay? That's fine, that's giving me the length that I want. But I also want it to be directly over the middle point of this line, which if it's 3, is going to be 1.5 inches here, okay? So let's change this here. Now this is, uh, you know, as I, I squabbled between, you know, um, a hundredth of a point, um, it, it, you know, it doesn't matter, but I, eventually, you know, I, I, this change can be just fine. Um, that's going to differ a little bit. Um, this is really what I want. Um, I want this to go this way an inch and a half, so it's going to overlap this midpoint, and I want this to totally be the length that I want. Okay. Um, then I'm going to come down here to my original point and hope that works. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Now let's double check. It's always good to double check. So what do I want? Um, I want the point to be in the very middle of this line. So I'm going to drag out a straight guideline and plop it right down there. And let's zoom in on this guy. And let's do some measuring. I want this leg, again, to be that dart leg measurement. Perfect. Um, I want this to here to be about a half an inch, or inch and a half. Perfect. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is, remember, we need to curve the bottom a little bit. Now, this is going to be fairly subtle, um, because for this length, um, the godet is not very wide. Um, if the godet was a lot wider, um, this would make more of a difference, but it's still important to do to make sure that your hem is going to come out properly. So what I want to do is I want to grab this draft tool, I'm going to start here and come straight down along this guideline that I already have. And I'm going to hit the Alt key, I'm going to go from last point, good, I don't want any deviation right or left, and I want this to be my dart leg length and it's going to be very close it's only a little bit longer so I'm going to need to really zoom in so you can see it okay so what I'm going to do is I need to build out this little curve so um, I think the easiest way to do this is just to make a point on the contour here. Make it a curve point. And then drop it down to that point that I made. Okay, it's doing something really weird. Ah. I think I see why. I made a point on this line and not on this line. So let's try that again. Maybe let's just, I'll put it just, just off to the side. And I'm gonna curve it. And I'm gonna drop this down right there. So there we are, there's our finished go day. Um, and again, this little curve may, might seem like a really wiggly small detail, but again, the wider your go days get, the more important it's going to be. Um, and the more of a difference that you're going to see, the more you're going to have to drop it, which you can always use that curve point, or you can build it out uh, by drafting and joining, whichever you prefer. So now, again, our grain line for our um, go days need to go up this center line, so let's fix that. And then I would just simply go ahead and label it, um, cut, let's see how many we need to cut, one, two, three on the front, probably three on the back, two on the sides, that would be eight, so cut eight, and they would be put in all these little spots. And 
um, for this draft, I don't need to do anything more to the actual pattern pieces. I'm just adding the Godet into the construction. Of course, I need to put all the seam allowance information. I would need to have facings. I would need to do all this. Um, but just for the drafting um, and main construction, that's all I would really need to do. Okay, last example. So this was our sort of directional slash and spread. Now I'm going to do this just, but I'm going to do it slightly um, simpler. I think I'm going to reduce the amount of slashes. I think maybe just down to three. We'll have like one, two, three coming across. So let's take a look. Now we did this with um, a separate bodice and pant sloper, if you remember. I'm uh, not pant sloper, skirt sloper. So I'm not going to open up one of the um, dress slopers. I'm going to open up the skirt sloper. And I'm also going to open up my bodice sloper. So to do this, since I don't, I probably do, but just so you know, uh, I don't currently have a file with both of them in there, so I'm going to open it up, up twice, open one up with the bodice, open one up with the skirt, highlight or select um, both pattern pieces for one, and then just bring it over to the other one and paste it in. It's pretty easy. So there we go. And then I can close down this one and just work on this one. Okay, now of course the first thing I want to do is to crop this down to length. Let's say it's going to be about 20 inches shorter. Um, so far we've just been kind of cutting and deleting, but just to show you another way of doing things, I can actually use the Extend and Parallel tool um, and enter in a negative amount. So a little bit of a shorter dress. There we go. Um, and let's go ahead and figure out, um, of course I'm going to just do the front of this, so let's put the back pieces to the side. Where our uh, lines are going to go. Um, so if we look here, let's this one's going to go up, probably the apex here, so it's going to kind of come in here, across, and it's going to come kind of across here. This is the waist, so maybe a little bit above the waist, and this one's going to come uh, down here into the um, sort of upper hip region. Now, of course, what we need to do, since this is asymmetrical, is to um, go to our half symmetry and set the half and then open the half so we can have both sides to work on. And once we have set it, we'll just make sure it's selected and click open half. There, now we have a full pattern to work from. Um, and what I want to do is, I, it really would be good for me to um, draft my lines before I cut them. But again, I'm just to save time, I'm going to go ahead and just go for it. So this kind of comes up here, maybe goes to like the armpit area, or not the armpit area, but the armhole area. So um, let's do it quickly. I want where I'm going to cut is where the tuck is going to be, okay? So where you want it. So let's say it's going to come from here and go up here. Let's cut it. And I'm just going to be slightly curved because the I want it to be slightly curved. Okay, there's that one. Um, now we have to decide: is there going to be any piece of this one that is included in my my hip? It doesn't look like it, so let's go ahead and put it in. It just goes straight across here. So let's go ahead and do that. Maybe a little curve and then maybe it goes like kind of straight here okay all right now um 
what we're going to do is first I want to close this dart that little remnant of a dart I want it to be closed okay so I'm going to go to tools I selected it darts close dart Boop. and now we can get rid of it Um, okay, fantastic. Now what I need to do is I need to do similar dart closing here. So um, since the darts are still here, I can use the close dart tool. Boop. And let's do this one as well. If not, I always can just cut the, okay. So it made it really weird, so um, let's not do it that way. Let's do it a little bit more proper way um, by cutting it. So let me zoom in so you see what I'm doing. Oops. So I'm gonna cut kind of through here. And it still might look a little wonky, but let's get rid of it, make it negative space. And I'm going to join up my pieces. Okay. And um, don't worry about how wonky it looks right now. It's going to, because um, we're going to draft over all of this. And since this isn't going through the whole piece, I am going to use the closed dart tool here to be much easier. There we are. Okay. All right. Well, it looks more, but it's okay. Clean it up a bit. Get rid of stuff we don't need. Not that it really matters because this is not going to be part of the final piece. What happened to my front? Did I erase it? Ooh. Let's get it back. Boop. There we go. All right, now, same thing here. We can just close the darts on this guy as well. So let's select them and close them. <laughs> All right, I'm going to see if this is just too wonky. Uh, and if it is, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do it. Yeah, yeah. So we'll <laughs> let's just cut them out and join the pieces. <laughs> Get rid of what we don't need and join up what remains. Again, these, these legs might not be the same length, but again, it's okay. Oh yeah, big difference there, but again, it's okay. Because what we're going to do now, actually, let's get rid of these guys because I don't need them. It's only going to do the front. Move this to side for right now. Okay, so um, let's take a look at our, what we're doing again. So um, the big tucks are down here, so the big openings are going to be here. And we're preserving the fittedness over here, so it's not going to be really full over here. So these are going to be our pivot points, and we're going to be opening up the negative space over here. So let's do that. I'm going to grab this piece. I'm going to rotate. So this is the pivot point here. Rotate, piece tool. Thank you. And let's open it up like so. 
I need to rotate it to be able to, there we go, and let's put that right in there. So these are there, and I'll, I'll go make sure um, that it is not overlapping um, in my zoom to sort of finalize it. And so we've opened up that first tuck over here. Um, and as you can see, it's already quite large, but that's fine. We need it to be. It's doing a lot. I'm going to open this up as well. Okay, that's too much. So let's rotate it back a little bit. Again, I want to make it about the same distance as it is in that first one. I want to make them all this, about the same. All right. Now let's just make sure these are all nice. There we go. There we go. Come on. Oh, come on. Move it. Oh, yeah. Close enough. Okay. So what we can do now is um, we can draft that um, into one full piece, uh, or we can do the whole thing all together. So we do have one more slash to go. This one, you know, one that's going to come down here. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so let's say it's coming from, oh, a, you know, here's waist, maybe between high hip and waist. Because we want to keep them about the same distance apart. See how this is a little bit longer. So we have a little bit more here. So I'm going to cut this and I'm going to cut it all the way down maybe to full hip. Okay, now what I'm going to do is close all of these darts. It shouldn't give us too much of a problem. There we go. And just continue with uh, rotating them out. So rotate this piece out. And what's going to happen is a lot of this is going to have a little bit of ease to it. I'm actually, since there's uh, this slashes on the bottom, there's no slash here at the waist in between it. So what I want to do is pretty much make sure that when I rotate it, this point and this point are going to touch. Now, is it going to create a little bit of extra ease? Yeah, there's going to be a lot of e extra ease needed for this um, uh, draft. Because again, the front is all just sort of really big, full drapes. Okay, a little bit more because I don't want to overlap. Place that right in there. Okay. And our last, which is going to be our last slash. Right down here like this. Okay, that looks pretty good. Again, all these openings for the tucks, one, two, three tucks, are pretty even. Let's now... Maybe you say, oh, that looks so crazy. It's like going off to the side there. Well, yeah, but think about it. Every time when you make one of these tucks go back, you're sort of shifting it back into the straight up position. Um, so it does look weird. Um, but again, once you put those tucks in and start folding point to point, point to point, point to point, it's going to straighten itself back up while adding those um, flares in them, or not flares, but um, drapes in them. 
Now from here, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna protect all of the pieces and draft now I want this to all be curved here and kind of a smooth line smoothish probably better to zoom in for this but points since I'm not. Now here what I'm going to do is I'm going to just smooth through here. I may just not do that little indent for the waist. Again, we're kind of doing a more general shape and then come back down here at the hem. Okay, important. Now, before I do anything, I want to make sure that I notch and indicate where these um, tucks are going to be. So let's go ahead and do that. So here's one, here's another, here's another. Another. And another. I'm going to scoot this out and as odd as this looks it is our finished pattern we do want our grain line to be sort of along that center front although this I would actually recommend you do it as a as a bias so it will look a little bit like this um, in addition, if you want, you can sort of redraft what you hope the sort of draft uh, these will look like. But essentially, how you cut it and how you uh, did your rotation is what is uh, will give these tucks their direction. So all you really need to do is to put where you're going to close your tucks and in what direction you're going to close your ducks tucks too. Is it going to come down or is it going to come up? I would recommend come, having them come up. So you can put it just a little arrow on how you want that to be done. Okay guys, hopefully this helped uh, give you a little bit of an idea of um, how to do some alternate stuff in your dress drafting. Again, it's a huge world um, and I can't recommend you to open your books and take a look at some of the suggestions on how to draft dresses in your book. Um, and also, if you want, you can take a look at that vintage pattern making site that I showed you at the beginning of the semester because they have some great examples too. Um, and they spell out, of course, how to do every step. Um, uh, you know, the only downfall is it's, it's not an opti text, it just goes over the actual techniques and, and things like that. But at this point, hopefully, you should be fluent enough with opti text that you can translate that into the opti text uh, format. All right, guys, um, I'll see you later and. Have a good one.